everybody. Welcome to Ignite 2020, our career exploration series. Um, this session is specifically going to explore biotechnology and conservation career paths. My name is Katie Martucci. I work in career services as our employer relations advisor, and I want to start off just by thanking our event sponsors. So for our all things animals, Ignite events, that includes Red and Goat Equestrian and Delaware Valley University Alumni Council. All of our panelists are willing to connect with you as well. So if you'd like to connect with them, we again recommend you stick around for those roundtable conversations, or you can also follow up with CSPD at delval.edu um, to get in touch. So I would love if our panelists here could introduce themselves and then we will dive into questions. Well, I'll go first. My name is Lindsay Schiff. I am a rainforest biologist too at Moody Gardens in Galveston, Texas which is just kind of a fancy name for a zookeeper. I work with birds, small mammals, which includes porcupine sloths, primates, giant otters, not really small mammals, um, and bats. Good morning, everyone. My name is Garrett White. I am the biologist at John Hines National Wildlife Refuge in Southwest Philadelphia. Um, part of my job is invasive species management, threatened endangered species, and generally just the overall habitat management for the refuge here. Good morning, I'm Grant Sizemore. I am the Director of Invasive Species Programs for American Bird Conservancy, uh, where the primary program uh, that I run there is called Cats Indoors. Hello everybody, I'm Selena Bergano. I'm a zookeeper at uh, Zoo New England at Franklin Park Zoo at the Tropical Forest. Uh, and I graduated from Delaware in 2016 with my best friend, Lindsay Schick, over there. Thanks everybody, appreciate that. So we'll just dive straight into questions. So again, Lindsay, we can start with you and then everyone can follow suit and answer this one. How has your first job impacted your career and where you are today? Uh, so my first job really ever was working at an aquarium in their education department. Uh, so it really kind of started off realizing that I wanted to be a zookeeper from like super early on in what I was doing. I, they did a lot of training in their marine mammal department. Uh, so it really put me on the path of really wanting to train animals. That's really my passion and what I, my biggest passion in zookeeping is is helping train the animals. And then the other part is helping with conservation as well. Um, and it kind of really continued onto my first zookeeping job here is really wanting to train, really wanting to connect to guests about animals. So my first uh, job post-college was an, as an intern for the US Forest Service in Michigan. And what that one really showed me was the um, was a uh, first steps into federal jobs and all the different types of federal jobs out there, um, particularly how there's a lot of different agencies that will have a lot of different missions. And so finding the right uh, agency that matches what your personal philosophy is um, was really kind of the name of the game for a few years as I figured out where I wanted to go. Hey, yeah, so uh, my first job after college um, was as an intern at the Wildlife Society. Um, where I worked on wildlife policy. And um, it was at the Wildlife Society that I had the chance to really delve into the, the different policy components of wildlife conservation, which is not something I was necessarily super interested in before, um, but uh, quickly learned how valuable it is. And um, I was also given the opportunity to really dive into invasive species work and in particular, on domestic cats, um, which is what I do now all day, every day. Uh, so it had a huge impact on what I do. And uh, my first job was at Zoo New England, Franklin Park Zoo uh, Children's Zoo. I was an intern there. And uh, I mean, it wasn't a paid job, but it, I think it's important to remember that internships definitely count as a job. So uh, luckily for me, if, it worked out in the end that that internship kind of allowed me to get a temp job right after graduation, which led me to my current position. Um, yeah. Great, thank you everybody. All right, so next question here. 
How has your career differed or stayed the same from what you imagined it would be when you first started out? And maybe that's when you first started out your program in college or even back to when you were a little kid. Uh, so when I started out, I, I did my first internship at and first job at an aquarium and I was gonna be a marine mammal trainer. That was the goal. I did all of my internships with marine mammals because I was going to be a marine mammal trainer. Um, but you know, when you graduate college, you just apply for any job you can so you can get a foot in the door. And I got my job down here in Texas. Also never thought I would live in Texas. And it started working small mammals. And then in my job, you could train on different routines. So I started with small mammals and then I got trained on birds, which when I was in college, I didn't take ornithology because I said, I'm never going to work with birds. I don't need to. Um, and I work with birds now and I love birds. <laughs> so that's kind of kind of really changed where I went. I still love mammals and I still, but I just, I love birds now. <laughs> Who would have thought? Not I. For me, um, I had absolutely no clue what I wanted to do a few months before graduation, even immediately after graduation. I was just absolutely like, ah, what's the real world going to be like? Um, and then I, I had this internship for my capstone project my senior year, and I was talking to this person about it. She said, oh, well, there's this awesome program called the Student Conservation Association. And I kind of describe them as like a middleman for internships for like state and national parks and wildlife refuges all across the country. And what it did is basically you you get an internship for three to six months or something. And it allowed me to travel literally all across the country. Um, the hardest part was just you're constantly applying. You're constantly the unknown of what's the next job, what's the next internship. You don't get paid a lot of money, but you definitely get a ton of experience and you get to see the country, which is what I wanted to do at that time. And then now as I progress in my career, I'm kind of like zeroing in on a location, Philadelphia, and loving it so far. So if you're interested in travel, I definitely like to steer folks to the Student Conservation Association. I say starting out for me, I wanted to be uh, Steve Irwin or Jeff Corwin. That was really my, my career goal. Uh, and I'm not quite there yet, but we'll see. <laughs> Um, you know, I grew up watching all the wildlife documentaries. I remember the Discovery Channel had this program called, I think it was like Wild or Wild Discovery. And, uh, you know, it just eating up all the wildlife documentaries that I could. Uh, and, and I thought I was going to be that, uh, that wildlife biologist out in the field, living remotely among the wildlife, sort of like a, a Tarzan experience, I guess. Um, and that has not materialized. Uh, I'm still a wildlife biologist, but I work now in public policy um, and uh, in a way that is drawing together uh, wildlife conservation and public health and, and the legalities of wildlife conservation. It's very different, but still kind of related and still doing really cool things to, uh, to conserve wildlife. So although I'm at a desk most days, uh, and not out in the field living amongst the, the wild creatures, uh, still doing cool things for wildlife. Um, <clears throat> I feel like uh, if there's any zoo science freshmen or wildlife freshmen in this group, you are probably very aware that everybody thinks they have a niche already in freshman year of college that they're gonna be a, uh, so Lindsay was like freaky marsupial girl for a while. Then she was the marine mammal girl. And I was like, hoofstock queen, I'm going to work with giraffes. And people are, you know, flooding my, every gift was a giraffe. I had never worked with a giraffe. And this is what I thought I was going to do for the rest of my life. So I ended up at the children's zoo at that internship. And I was like, oh my God, they're crazy. They don't know I love giraffes because they had giraffes at this zoo. And, um, Anyway, I did that internship and then just the placement that I got when I graduated was at the tropical forest and it was all like a lot of primates, including gorillas. I was like, oh, well, this is just a stepping stone on my way to giraffes. And then as I started working with primates, I really realized like, like as Lindsay said, you have no idea what you're gonna end up working with because as Garrett said, you apply to a million jobs and you take whatever you get. Um, and then I think you end up finding your niche from that. So. I, 
I wouldn't even say that now I'm a primate person because I think it's probably healthier just to say you're a zookeeper and work with whatever they'll give you. But um, what what I think is interesting for me right now, especially coming from zoo science, which is a smaller program and very intense sometimes uh, in terms of the personalities that are in that group. I know our group was intense. Um, I have also started thinking about sort of beyond zoos, what is there out for me? And so that's where I'm looking at right now is possibly moving into a little more um, education, not even zoo education, maybe just museum education. I don't know. I think it's important to, especially at a school like Delval, where you get put in a box so quickly to think about all the other things that you can do, because there are a lot of things that you can do without having to worry about, oh, I wanted to be a zookeeper since I was five. And now I, I made it and I'm going to be a zookeeper for the rest of my life. Like, I, it's okay. You don't have to. Um, Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate like the depth of your answers and the thoughtfulness there. I'm sure light bulbs are going off for students um, who are listening in. Um, I do want to ask this question. I I'm going to toss it out to you either way here. So can you share an example of either an obstacle you faced and how you overcame it or a failure you encountered and what you learned from it? Uh, so. I'll do the failure one um, because I've used this for like my best thing and my worst thing that I've ever done during like an interview. This is like what I did at my job. Um, so my job is basically a free flight aviary and there's exhibits within it. And so I have a bird that I work with. His name is Zazu. He's a red bull hornbill. I love him. And so I had just started training this bird, like maybe a month. And all of a sudden I see Zazu out of his exhibit, flying around his free flight. I panicked initially, calmed down. And then I recalled train him back. So I called him back, got him crated like in a howdy and basically got him. And then I immediately put him back into the exhibit where he escaped from instead of fixing the problem. So I learned from my mistake because he got immediately back out of the exhibit because he knew how to get out. So it's always good to, you know, you think you could do something great and then it's like up oh, immediate failure afterwards. And that is, I uh, always want to like talk to your supervisor, make sure you're realizing 100% of what the problem was, because the problem was getting him at, from the free flight back into his exhibit, but there's more to that problem where he could get back out of his exhibit. So I always think that it's funny that it gets rolled into one for me. I'm gonna take the other question and do more of the obstacles and kind of change the question just a little bit um, in that, it's the obstacles that I'm always constantly working on, even to this day. For instance, um, time management and flexibility and looking ahead to see where either my career's going or the job or something like that. And particularly when it comes to continuing to learn, um, it's you're, you're gonna need to be a lifelong learner. That's just where a lot of jobs are. You Most of the time, I say that college um, doesn't necessarily tell you what you're gonna do for your job, but it's gonna tell you how to learn. And so you're gonna you're gonna take this and take those skills for the rest of your life um, and learn with the actual job on the job. Um, and so I'm always trying to find time to stay on top of scientific papers and stay up to the day of the research and watch the webinars and then also make sure that I'm, you know, exercising and eating healthy and doing everything else that I'm supposed to be doing. Um, and it's just a constant challenge, but I just you know it's. It's just something that's necessary to continue to move up in, in a career. So I'm gonna talk about uh, an obstacle or a series of obstacles that I faced um, in my career path. And that, that was really finding a job, which I'm sure many of you will be able to relate to. Uh, so I graduated, uh, I finished grad school in 2009, end of 2009. So for any of you who you know, were paying attention during that time, not a lot of jobs available. Uh, and I was really lucky to get my internship at the Wildlife Society that I mentioned 
before. And by the way, uh, they just announced they've got two new internships available at the Wildlife Society. So for anybody who's interested, uh, those are currently accepting applications. Um, and then after that internship, though, it was like nothing. I moved back home, lived with my parents, um, and just applied like crazy to jobs all over the country. Uh, and it took a long time. It took a really long time to find a, a permanent position. There were lots of temporary positions. Some of them were really cool. Uh, like I got to teach a college course in South Africa for a few weeks, which was awesome, but it was temporary. And so, uh, you know, like Garrett said, I was constantly looking what's coming next uh, and, and applying to a whole lot of different jobs. And I found, you know, you just got to keep, keep at it. It's a little like conservation in a nutshell. Like it's super challenging. You're facing incredible odds. Uh, the obstacles are immense, but you just, you know, you, you keep plugging away and you make progress little by little. And eventually, uh, you know, after working as a barista for quite a while, I found uh, a nice job at uh, American Bird Conservancy working in wildlife conservation. Um, I mean, yes, to all of those obstacles. I'm going to tell a story about a mistake that I made that was a learning experience. So uh, I was an intern at the Norwalk Aquarium, no, the Maritime Aquarium in Norwalk. And they, I had never done aquariums before. So they, you know, you're learning a lot of different skills. And I did this internship specifically because I thought it would be good to learn some like water quality tank skills. So one of the skills that they taught me to do was to, to gravel siphon. So you would like, you know, start the siphon and, and, and then you'd like vacuum the fish poo. And the way they taught us to do it was to put, some people dunk this, this is too technical. Some people dunk the siphon, fill it up with water and then it's, it just like starts a vacuum. The way they taught us at this was put the siphon in the water, put the tube in your shirt and then suck on it while you're, so that you're watching the water to come. So anyway, uh, I got really good at this, and uh, by the end of the internship, they had us sort of specialize in different tank areas. So I was in, in jellyfish, and uh, the tank is like the tank, right? And the jellies are just floating; they can't swim, so they're just floating. And um, the tank has a, a bio section where the filter is that has all the material that keeps the water healthy. So I put the siphon in the tank because they had told me to do like a twenty-five percent water change, and I start with the siphon like. Okay, I'm going and I put it down to the drain and I look back to to make sure my hose is still in the water and I see three jellyfish <laughs> going down the siphon. And I was like, oh God, and I grabbed it and I like dumped it out. And then I'm just in this pan, I just killed three animals. I killed them, there was no way to save them. And um, what I didn't do, which is what I should have done and what I now as a teacher of interns am so aware of is I should have said, I killed your jellyfish, I'm sorry. Can you please show me how to start this siphon better? Because what I should have done was started it in the in the bottom in the filter, instead of with these poor creatures that can't even swim away from death's door. But um, the reason I'm telling this story is because I think it's important for you if you're going into a new job to accept the fact, hopefully that you, you won't kill anything, especially if you're working with larger animals but that um, you will make mistakes and they will be stupid and um, you will be humiliated by them, but it's important to own them because if I had owned it, A, I, I wouldn't have gotten fired. You know, like interns make mistakes all the time. I have seen interns make mistakes that have almost threatened my life. And you just have to say, no, please don't do that. And that's a learning experience for you. Um, like Lindsay said, you have to learn to work through these problems. And the only way you can learn through problems is to cause problems, in my opinion. So, um, and always start your water vacuum in the filter. That's what. Oh my goodness. Thank you, everyone. I, the honesty is really welcomed. Um, I think we ha we maybe have five minutes not even. So if anyone would like to share a brief nugget of wisdom, the best piece of advice that you'd love our students to hear from you, that would be great. And then once we do that, we will transition over to the round tables. I always like to recommend that folks take that shorter term internship across the country and like really get out of their, their comfort zone. Um, 
with, particularly if a job has a deadline, you know, if this if it's only three months, that's a pretty short amount of time that you can get some great experience within your field and see if you can live away from home if you know across country and then it's a great experience that you had and there's no real i mean there aren't long-term implications necessarily for taking that taking that risk and you never know you might find a new career you might meet some new new network contacts you might have an awesome experience but i definitely encourage folks to step out of that comfort zone and go a little farther away than you know that one two hours away from where you were born kind of mentality I'll go. Um, I, uh, I've already said it a little bit, but I think something that's big for me is just, oh, a cat. Um, being aware of the fact that it's okay if you've wanted to be something since kindergarten to change your path, even while you're at DelVal. Like I said, DelVal is very like, you, you know your major from freshman year, which is so weird um, at most colleges, that is not the case. So um, I think I loved my DelVal experience. I would never say anything against it bleed green and gold, but um, it is important, I think, for you to remember that you can explore things. And at Delval, you have a lot of opportunity to explore a lot of different things. And that's something I'm gonna talk about a lot at my little table. So, um, but I think Lindsay and I, and I'm sure Garrett will both agree that there are a lot of opportunities there that are gonna give you different ways to think about what you want to do. So don't let yourself be pigeonholed, even though it's very easy to do that. Um, I, I have some advice. It's um, don't be afraid to reach out to people, uh, even if you think they're like some big wig at a conservation organization or at DelVal. You know, don't be afraid to just sit down and chat with them and be like, you know, this is what I'm thinking about. Do you do you have any suggestions, any comments, any feedback? Where do you think I should be going from here to position myself for that? Um, uh, people love this has been my experience at least in the in the conservation field people love to give back because we're all trying to achieve something sort of holistic you know save the planet and and we need more people doing this with us um so it's been my experience that everyone wants to provide you with opportunities give you the information you need to be successful and i i've not really worked in business but it's not like what I imagine businesses where it's, you know, competition with other people all the time. Um, so, so reach out to uh, professors, reach out to local organization leaders, uh, national organization leaders, you know, just, just start those conversations, build a network and gather the information that will be uh, helpful to make you make uh, the right steps, avoid any pitfalls and, and find the right career path for you. Mine uh, is kind of similar, um, but I feel like you guys should make a support system around you. Like your job's important, um, but you know, your job can suck sometimes. And if you don't have anyone around you to like build you up when sometimes the job can break you down, um, it makes it really hard and that's why sometimes zookeepers are really short-lived in the career if you don't have anyone around to to support you and build you back up and you know honestly it starts at DelVal I still get people asking how I'm doing um, through that I have some of my best friends from there and you know sometimes there's a, there is a lot of con competition within you know the zoo con community where it's really competitive because it's a competitive job and there are a lot of big egos, but if you have friends, make friends at your job and that will support you through someone being terrible to you, then that's how you, you know, you make it in here. It's, it's making friends and having support.